A great tech tip is checking the oil. How do I burp the engine? When do I burp it? Do I have to burp it every time? I get that question almost every day. Um, always refer back to your aircraft maintenance manual or the Rotex maintenance manual for continued airworthiness. But I'm going to show you how to do it, how Rotex explains how to do it. So this engine, this is Corbier Alto 100, stone cold, hasn't flown in probably a week and a half. Um, so we're going to check the oil. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take the oil cap off. We're going to put it somewhere where I'm not going to forget it. A great place to put it, a friend of mine, Dean, taught me, put it in the pilot seat. Can't forget it if it's in the pilot seat. Next, we're going to not even pull the dipstick out of the oil can. There's no reason to even look at the dipstick until we pull the prop through in the normal rotation until we hear the engine gurgle or the oil can gurgle. What that's doing is when we're pulling the engine through and it's pressurizing the crankcase with blow-by pressure from the, from the cylinders through past the pistons. It's pressurizing the crankcase, forcing that oil to go into the oil can. As soon as it's, you know, done and it's it just air, it's going to gurgle or it's going to burp. So I'm going to burp the engine for you. So we're going to pull the prop through a normal rotation. We're going to never turn the propeller backwards. Always pull the Rotex through normal rotation. And listen for the oil can to burp. Now I can check the oil level and see where we're at on the uh, oil. Uh, we'll get it nice and clean. We'll bottom that thing out. So we're going to pull the dipstick out. We've cleaned it and we've pulled it out. And we notice that we're about three quarters of the way up on that flat. Rotex recommends that if you're 50% on the flat or higher, you're good to go. Now they also recommend if you're going to go on a long cross country, go ahead and top it off to the top of the flat. Uh, but if you're just going to go do some pattern work or do some short flights, you're legal to fly this airplane, no problem, it's safe. 50% on the flat or higher, you're good to go. If you have an older uh, 912, there's been a change to the can, to the dipstick, so on and so forth. Uh, there's a service bulletin on the dipstick itself, and the telltale sign is going to be, uh, if you have a dipstick that has a round top to it, in this area here, that's the older style dipstick that's no longer in compliance. The square top dipstick is the one that you're going to want to look for. So if you've got an experimental and you've got an airplane you see on the engine you see on the internet and you want to buy it, that's one of the, one of the things you want to look at is if they, if they haven't done the dipstick service bulletin, chances are they haven't done a lot of other service bulletins in the engine and you may end up with an engine that's going to cost you several, several thousands of dollars to get it up into compliance, make sure it's safe. So a quick and easy thing to do, check the dipstick. Make sure it's a square top.